We've all seen Space Jam's version of Lola, but the Looney Tune show has the best version of Lola. Also, look at my Twitter. <laughs> The episode revolves around this country club. No, I'm not stating the name of it because it's super long and I already forgot. What is important though is that we see Daffy scheming. How can he get in? Can he simply walk in or does he need something more? Well, it turns out that he needs a membership number to which his first time guessing one didn't work out so well, which means he'll need to figure out a proper membership number. We don't have you as a member. And you never will. Membership number? 1673. 1673, huh? The Looney Tunes show is a great example of proper storytelling that isn't too heavily reliant on continuity or over-the-top wacky humor like its predecessors and successors, and it's highlighted here very well. Considering that this number is tied to an actual person for it to be a real membership number, there are also so many ways this can go, and lots of them are pretty bad. Speaking of, I found the joke of Daffy rushing into the bushes to conjure up a plan and getting sprayed by water by the grounds keeper to just be hilarious. He rushes back with his fake but technically okay membership number and gets beamed in the face with a golf ball. I'm just gonna write down that this was a success. Despite the more refined quality and character designs and unwillingness to go off model and keeping everything looking visually stunning, that never impeded the Looney Tunes show skill at making slapstick work. Considering that Daffy really only has like 1.5 friends, he brings bugs to the club and immediately there are two things I enjoy about this scene. Daffy, how did you get into a country club? I'm rich. No you're not. I'm beloved in the community. No, you're not. Well, this is a real he said, she said situation. Everyone needs a bugs in their life to keep them grounded. Another part of this scene that I enjoy is Daffy's quick adjustment to the fancier and rich lifestyle that this country club brings out. People play golf or tennis, and it's a bunch of older, more affluent folks being pampered on a beautiful property. It meshes so well with Daffy's lazy nature and this extreme belief that he should be taken care of and coddled to his every whim and command. I think something like this is a match made in heaven, which also just led me to just enjoy the times when he isn't around bugs in this country club, just pretending to be this rich and just stuck up person. I mean, look at this. Wow, this place is pretty impressive. Oh, we only let in the real hoi polloi, the finest bourgeois. You don't speak French. I'm sorry for that. Dickie, Aggie, hugs, hugs, kiss, kiss. Wanted to introduce you to my friend Bugsy. What made me want to pick this episode, partially just wanting to spearhead the Lola appreciation on YouTube, is that this is a fairly different episode than what I've reviewed when it comes to the Looney Tunes show. It's actually not outlandish at all, compared to when Bugs was a biker and completely changed his personality, or when Daffy went to the army. This episode specifically focuses on a dynamic between Bugs and Lola, and to a lesser extent, Bugs and Daffy, both of which are my favorites. So I have a lot to say. What are you on about? How is this not simple? You throw your Wii remote up with the back button pressed and then you swing. This isn't Wii Golf. Bugs gets creamed in the back of the head, not to the intensity of Daffy to which he died and we're seeing a clone of him, but enough for him to confront the person and throw hands. However, that person would end up being a very important person to both him and the show. Oh. Hey, game. Uh, are you okay? I don't know. Do I look okay? I think you look great. I think you look great too. Yes, they met through Lola being very wacky and incompetent, but naturally optimistic. To our lens, we know that this is just how Lola is, but to Bugs, he probably sees someone a little bit more smart, who is just not that good at tennis. However, I think the fact that Bugs immediately forgets the fact that he got clocked in the back of the noggin, and decides to hand wave all of that for what he perceives to be a pretty bunny shows that he's thinking more with his carrot than his brain, and that's gonna come back to bite him in the tail. Bugs goes back to gloat to Daffy about his date, which we see the image of Daffy hunched over after a long game, wiping the sweat off his forehead. This is peak Daffy because he won a game in which Bugs wasn't there for, and is proud, and is treating this like if it was a championship win. I don't know why, but that was just such a great visual. Ah, uh, the dates. This is a standard setup, you have the waiter, Bugs, and Lola. 
who will play the street man, the embarrassed, and the oblivious, respectively. However, it doesn't start that way. Can I get you anything to start? I'll, I'll have, have the, the carrot, carrot soup. soup. Oh. <laughs> Two carrot soups. And try not to mix up our orders. Oh. <laughs> oh. She's still a bunny of few words, which aids in the misinterpretation in that this is not the Lola that Bugs should know her as, and it's a great way to make the big reveal. This early personality is very interesting, however. It's like tea at the tree dome when we see Sandy for the first time and she's very, very different. It's almost alien in nature due to the lack of previous material to build on, but seeing these characters that we've seen do so much better or for worse is something that will never get old. Also, that waiter is salty that he can't get a date. So snobby. Don't be mad at Bugs because your nose has its own zip code. I bet you provide the restaurant with free Wi-Fi because your nose is the hotspot. It is then that we start to see Lola's unorganized, rambly, bubbly nature starts to unravel. And it was all due to a simple phone call. She rummages through her purse having multiple items including a rubber band ball which doubled up as another slapstick joke for a very unfortunate waiter. Speaking of, his reactions are golden when he sees Lola both want and not want the carrot soup. Bug slowly starts to see the red flags but continues to push on with the date. Just adjusting it to a movie theater. You know, so they can be very quiet and chill. Oh, Bugs, you underestimate Lola's sense of shame. <laughs> wow, that was a good movie. And now, your feature presentation. Look at the confusion, I just love it, and the, just the bewilderment in Bugs' eyes as he experiences the delight that is Lola. She is an entirely different beast to Daffy, but not by much. So Bugs thinks that this date was the worst date that he's ever been in, but Lola thinks that this is the best date that she's ever been in. And this miscommunication and different perspectives on how they feel about each other only gets more distant as time moves on, for this episode at least. She then never gives Bugs any time to reflect on the date, constantly bombing him with calls and emails to which we see a very funny moment where Bugs immediately points to Daffy and commands that he doesn't touch the phone. Hi Bon Bon, it's Lola. Just trying to get a hold of you again. So anyway, call me. If I don't hear back from you in the next minute or so, I'll just go ahead and call you again. Bye. Oh, before I forget to mention, Lola's voice actor, she does a phenomenal job at voicing Lola. The way she moves through different inflections and intensities to create this very unstable and varied pattern that gives Lola that signature rambly state is amazing. I honestly think that nothing can top that, and this performance is perfect, at least to me. Bugs may not like it so much, but I'm sure many fans enjoy Lola. Bugs goes on about how she's exhausting and never listens to a person who's exhausting and never listens, and it led me to think, Daffy and Lola aren't really all that too far apart in how they play a role in their dynamic with Bugs. Both of them can get into some pretty outlandish stuff, and both of them are generally giving Bugs a lot more to deal with than he should. Also not to mention, both can be pretty selfish towards what he wants to do. However, considering Bugs lives with Daffy, you would expect some of these signs to be a little bit more apparent to him. Lola's overbearing nature would get even more frequent when they bump into each other at the dry cleaners, grocery store, and at the gym. <sighs> Don't cry. Please, please don't cry. Don't cry. Wow, excellent advice. Seriously, of course she cries. Of course he caves back in. And of course, he wants a big muscly dude to choke him. Wait, what? No, I mean with a wait. I, I think that's the best way to say that, right? Now, ladies, what I'm about to tell you does not leave this table. Estelle and Abe are breaking up. <gasps> you didn't hear it from me. Fake Rich Daffy is a great aesthetic. I don't know why, but these tiny conversations he has with people, clearly being adjusted to the lifestyle despite having zero of the income to sustain it, it's just great. I love an entire episode around him politicking his way up the social ladder despite being a below average duck. That just sounds like a great idea. Bugs gets very drastic and decides to cross dress as his pretend ex-girlfriend or partner to try to scare Lola into breaking up with Bugs. Not only does it not work, but I agree with Lola. Girl Bugs 
Bugs is ugly. And I don't care that Daffy would end up whistling at girl Bugs. That's not a fan fiction I care too much to read about. Bugs thinks that he convinced Lola that he's no good. And then the opposite happens, with Lola thinking that Bugs is a bad guy. And that's for the lifestyle and aesthetic. Oh man. We also get an early glimpse of Lola's parents. Although Lola's mother wouldn't really say too much, Lola's father and Bugs would go on to bond and we would find out that Lola's father is actually quite similar to Lola. It's just that the bubbly nature doesn't come out because, well, he's an older guy. You have to end this. I don't care if she cries. I don't care that her parents are there. She's crazy. And this ends now. Bro, I don't think in any scenario ever. <laughs> wow, okay. <sighs> Breaking up in front of her parents, that's not a good idea. I know how crazy she is, but dude, like, he can break her spine just by looking at you the right way. And she's obviously going to make a big scene, and that isn't gonna end well. Also, just not doing it in private like you did at the gym. You know, that's just kind of the etiquette. In private, not in public. And if you're gonna do it in public, not in front of her parents. If this is Bugs thinking with his brain, I would much rather him going back to thinking with his carrot. He drops the mint that he got in the bathroom and falls under Lola's chair because story physics, which this very, very smart individual kneels down in front of Lola in her crazed romantic ways, which leads to exactly what you would think one person getting down on one knee to a crazed romantic person would do. Daffy also gets very comfortable throwing his weight around with his newfound membership number, just spending the money that isn't his haphazardly. That's gonna come back to bite him in the butt for this episode and others to come. Also, speaking of things that come back, I do want to note that Lola's father calls Bugs the son he never had, but let's get into the wedding that Pepe Le Pew makes his first appearance to plan, as he's a wedding planner for some reason. <laughs> what are you doing here? Did you sneak into the club using someone else's membership number? <gasps> Disgraceful! Imagine the level of projection and self-indulgence you have to have to be Daffy. This man would never lose a game of Town of Salem. This episode builds up the fact that Bugs doesn't like Lola, but Lola is so love-struck with Bugs that his hands are tied. He tried breaking up with Lola one-on-one, -on -one. that didn't work. He tries to break up with Lola in front of her parents. Bad idea, and it didn't work. He then has one more opportunity to break things off before they wed in front of her entire family. The best idea you have, but not the best time for you to have done something. In fact, I'd argue it's actually the worst time to do it, but even that doesn't work. It takes Lola to reject being with Bugs at the altar in front of their parents, in front of Lola's entire family, for them to finally break up. Yeah. They actually don't get together the first time they meet, but I do know which episode really gets the ball rolling, but before we get there, let's just see why things break off. But I can't marry you, because I'm in love with someone else. I'm in love with him! You know what they say, the eighth time's a charm. Will you ever get over me? So to me, this means a few things. Right now, Lola is just in that stage where she's in love with the idea of love rather than the commitment to someone. And that makes sense. She doesn't listen to Bugs, but instead projects how she feels about Bugs and how she thinks Bugs feels about her. But even more amplified due to the short amount of time of being together and how far she wants to take the relationship. I do think the fact that she proceeds to see Pepe is crazy, especially given how disconnected this is and how we really wouldn't see Pepe again for a major part of the episode, until season 2. This also shows how the relationship was incredibly on and off, which is something I didn't exactly realize going in. But after seeing other episodes, everything is coming back to me. I think it's a different way of going about it considering that many relationships in animation generally start out as a seed planted to be blossom later, whereas here the blossom happened and then another seed was planted over and over until things started to become more concrete, which is probably representative of Lola's wishy-washy nature of not really being able to focus on a singular thing and just being young and not really looking for any type of commitment just yet, which neither is Pepe. But that's revealed in season two, unless you already know that about him. Waiter, bring this man your finest set of golf clubs and charge it to 1673. 1673? That's my membership number. <laughs> 
Daffy ends up having to work off the money he spent recklessly, and Bugs and Lola wouldn't meet again until the episode Eligible Bachelors and Double Date, the latter of which I reviewed on this channel. So before you check it out, make sure to follow me on Twitter at the Alpha J Show and check out my review of Double Date. Until then, special thanks to the supporters of May, and until next time, take care. Alpha out. <laughs>